All right, guys. So you guys are here in the orientation. Yes, if you are returning, you do have to do this again because we have some new changes. Um, it's all Rick's fault, by the way. Thank you. Um, sit through this once today. You're done till next semester. Then the rules will probably change again. Uh, they've changed on us a couple times. So welcome to the welding program. We like to introduce ourselves. I'm Jake Manico, AKA the kid. Most of you guys know me. Um, 14 plus years of experience, certified welding inspector, um, vice president for a family owned company. And I am usually here from 10 to five and my information to contact me is right down here. I hit my email. Don't try my phone. I haven't had an office phone in about six months. So this is Rick Parafacini. Um, 44 plus years of welding experience and owner and operator of Rick's Welding, also CWI. Rick will be here from seven in the morning to about two or three in the afternoon. We're pretty flex. But there is Rick's email, phone number. I think your phone actually works. It does if I knew why. So if you guys are trying to reach me, call Rick, please. Is there a way to get this somewhere else? Well, on the website, Western's homepage, you can go to the faculty directory and all of our information will be there. No, yes, I, I don't know what I mean, so. yeah. yeah, it'll go to faculty direct directory and you can even hit welding department Good. and sure. it will pull it's us on, up. It's also on every one of your syllabi on for your classes. At nighttime, you guys will see Mr. Uncle Bud is what we call him. That's what he likes to be called by his Uncle Bud. Um, he's pretty much wrote the book on welding. Um, he's here from five to nine o'clock at night. If you guys like to have your ear bent, and have a little story time at night. He loved for you guys to talk. Lab hours are Monday through Thursday, 7 a.m. to 12 and 1 to 9 p.m. Rick and I are in our offices usually from 12 to 1. We leave the lab open so you guys can keep on working, um, but we're just not in the lab during lunch hour. We gotta have a little bit of a break to go grab a bite to eat real quick. Now, a lot of you guys have signed up for the welding program and seen that flex entry or on your schedule says TBD, to be determined, and go, uh. Well, let me tell you how this works. The semester runs on three five-week blocks, totaling 15 weeks total, okay? Say you signed up for three welding courses. Now, Rick and I ain't concerned with any of your English courses or government courses. We're not concerned with any of that, but we're talking to your welding courses. So you have three welding courses per se, for the semester, right? We're gonna try and get you guys to complete a welding course every five week block. And the way to do that is to show up to class three to four days a week, three to four hours a day to start out with. At the end of that five week block, if you have not finished up that welding course, it's a telltale sign that you need to be spending some more time in that lab as far as hours go. Because we all know the time you get set up and clean up, you've burned an hour. Uh, and the time you find one of us too, because the first couple weeks is gonna be crazy, crazy busy as far as getting mine and Rick's attention. We'll get to you, it just takes a little bit of time. If you can't get one of us, please find one of our other students that's pretty much almost done with the program, like Aiden, Daniel. Um, they know our curriculum. They will be more than happy to get you guys started. Um, now, the class does consist, or fall completely on you guys to complete this. We do not hunt you down to complete you. Um, we have 188 students of what we just last counted, it is impossible for me and Rick and Uncle Bud to even keep track of that. So if you guys do not see grades in the grade book, and we said we'd get you guys a grade, come talk to us. We, we usually, you guys tell us, or we look at a coupon and we're like, okay, we'll get you guys plugged in. Before we remember, we get pulled off on something else. So if you don't see it in Canvas, just remind us when we're in our office and most of the time we're like, okay, yeah, yeah, we forgot to enter. Um, we are gonna try to be pretty, Good. We, we are pretty good about that. Um, any questions as far as that goes, as far as flex entry? Now attendance, this is the new rule and I'm gonna let Rick talk. All right, we don't have any way of taking attendance. Uh, we've tried sign-in sheets, which we kind of worked about half the time. Last semester we had QR code scan, nobody did it. So this semester we're going with a fingerprint sign-in, sign-out system. So when you come in the lab, uh, put your fingerprint on there, it'll say thank you, you're logged in. When you go uh, hit your fingerprint again, uh, it'll sign you out. Once a week, I'll download all that information. I send it to uh, Tori Bertinoli, the, 
the student success coach. So she'll have a copy and I'll have a copy. That's our only means of attendance. So if uh, like an employer's paying for your class and he wants to know if you've been here, that's our only uh, way to, to, to prove that you have been. So if you haven't done the fingerprint scan thing yet, as soon as we're done with the orientation, come see me, we'll get you entered in there. So tomorrow morning you can just go to work, okay? And you covered the block in the... Oh no, so the first five classes of, uh, of our welding classes, 1720, 1725, 1755, 1760, and nine, no, 1840, are all on block schedules now. So you have to have your fingerprint in here before next Monday, but it, when you start working, you, you can only have, uh, what, two days? Two days. Every two, if you miss two days in a row, it drops you a letter grade automatically. So you have to stay, you have to come in the lab pretty much every day. And pay attention to which, when in these welding courses, you guys need to look at your schedule and pay attention to which block, whether you're in A block, B block, or C block, because there's corresponding dates to those. Like the first block is today, till five weeks from now is a block okay that is your scheduled time to come in here and complete that welding course yep. if you do not come in here in two days from that scheduled date it will drop you a letter grade okay does that make sense so then no, sit. I, I, there were no on the curriculum there was is this Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday and so I, no I'm not following we so we'll have to put, so when you look at your course schedule I have 17 Let's just go okay. 1755 and it'll have A, A1 next right. to it. A, B, C. A, B, right. C. That is your block. We're, into a right now. We're in block A right now. So with those blocks, it has corresponding dates. Look up the academic calendar. You can see it. And even on the schedule, it should say what span of dates it's on. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that is your schedule time to come in and complete that course. Okay. Is that five week block? Um, this is our way of trying to, we have, we literally flunk half of our grade book every semester for the past 10 years. So, so you were saying miss two days in a row. So I'm trying to figure out what am I missing? Are they Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday? Is that what yep. you're saying? Okay. Yep. So show up every day. Right, right. Right. Pretty much. This is our way of trying to force you guys to show up. Hey, if you don't show up, it just drops you a letter grade. Now that five week block also means you have four weeks to get done with all your uh, written tests for those classes. So, uh, one week before the end yep. of the of the block. So it works the same way with semesters. And we'll get into that in a minute. Jake will talk about it. So the way, say, we have that five weeks. You have four weeks within that block to get all of your online tests completed. Okay. If you do not complete those online tests within them four weeks, we have it set up to where it automatically shuts you off. Now our online tests are half your grade and your lab, your hands-on assignments are half your grade. So say you came in for them four weeks and you got all your lab work done, right. but you didn't do any of your written tests, it automatically flunks you. It's a 50%. It's a 50% is how we weight them. So how do we find out what, what course materials you guys are using? We'll get into that. All right. So if there's any questions, this is new to me and Rick too. We'll muddle through it, we'll work with you. Um, there's gonna be some hiccups along the way. Now behavior, we really don't have any issues with behavior as far as people getting out of hand or anything like that. We like to have a good time. Um, we are the funnest program by far. I think everyone else in here would agree that's returning. We are the funnest group to be around, so we don't have any problems with that. Our biggest bugaboo is cleaning your booths. Um, the booths get hammered, and I am going to be a stickler. I'm gonna be hard on you guys this semester. Um, when you guys come in, We'll have a sign-in sheet on our desk. Sign your booth out, and above on the vents, there's numbers. Please sign out what booth you're using. At the end of each class period, please clean up your booth. Sweep them out, dump the excess rod, put your excess rod that you haven't used back in the appropriate containers and size. Are you talking about booths or booths? Booths, booths. Oh, gotcha, it wasn't booths. Gotcha. Um, if Rick or I see you guys come out and dump a rod bucket and it's full of welding stubs, rod stubs, we're just gonna drop you a letter grade. There's no warning, there's no nothing. If we see you guys leave a booth a mess, we're just dropping you a letter grade. We are not playing these games anymore. Rick and I spent, Aiden, uh, a lot of our returning students, it, they've seen the hassle that we've had and it's just impossible for Rick and I to keep up with this. So we're just gonna drop you guys a letter grade if you guys don't keep, keep picked up after yourselves. So there's my one warning right there. 
Now, new rules. Years ago, we used to have a lab assistant that helped prep our material, done all of our ordering, done everything. Now that's up to me, Rick, Aiden, and Hunter. Um, and it's a, it's a chore. Uh, you figure prepping metal for 188 students, plus the two of us teaching, plus Rick doing a lot of the computer stuff you guys see. Um, I do more of the background, getting the butt chewed out by the higher administration. <laughs> um, but on a flip note, um, one thing we are harping on you guys is if you are planning on doing this as a career, please build your tool bucket up now. Um, by the end, I'd say if you guys came in tomorrow, I'll have you guys a tool list. I've been trying to find that. I worked on PowerPoint. Um, but I have a tool list. Okay. Now you can go to any of our welding suppliers, Air Gas, Rocky Mountain Air Solutions, Norco, Praxair. Um, you guys show them your student ID and they give you guys a good discount on tools and stuff. Um, but you got to have that student ID or else they won't give it to you. Now, if you're in this for the long haul, please buy some good tools. Um, you'll use them. You'll thank yourself for buying a good quality tool. Um, they are expensive. I think we rounded up on a cheap end. I think we're about 700 bucks for the basics. If you get into higher end tools, obviously you can probably double that easily. Um, Does that include welders? No, we supply the welders, the rod, and the metal. So what are the tools you're talking about? Basic hand tools, welding helmets, okay. gloves, safety glasses, grinders, chipping hammers, files. I was hoping to get a list of that. Yeah, I'll get you guys a list here um, tomorrow. It depends on what class you're in, too. Yep. Some classes are going to take different tools, specialized tools. That tool bucket is going to build as you progress through this program. Um, very basically, you need gloves, safety glasses, a striker, a tip cleaner. Pliers. Pliers. Um, about, Strikers, a slack cleaner. Uh, yep. Um, so very basic hand tools. Um, but we do push you guys, if you're going to be into this trade, to get your own tools. Uh, the second thing is, is grinders. We like you guys to furnish your own grinders. Um, you guys can go down to Home, De Home Depot, Murdoch's. Murdoch's has them sales, like Labor Day sales. You can pick up a DeWalt grinder for like 40 bucks. Um, Harbor Freight, 20 bucks. Um, they work just fine for what you guys are going to be doing. Now, if you don't have the means to buy your grinder, we do check them out. But this comes out of price as well. If we don't get that grinder back at the end of the semester, we charge your financial aid $289 for that grinder. Okay. So once we check you guys out, one of our grinders, it is yours for the semester. At the end of the semester, you guys turn it back in. If it's in good condition, we don't charge it. Okay. And it kind of one of my bugaboos is if you're sick, please stay home um, because you guys only have three of us welding instructors for 188 of you. If you guys are sick and it comes down to us and we have to take time off, which Rick and I really do not like taking time off. I actually had to force Rick to take days off last semester to go get his elk. <laughs> uh, we don't like taking days off. So if you guys are sick, please stay home, give a couple days. That way we don't get sick. Cause if we go down, we literally just cancel class. So help us help you be here. We only have 15 weeks, which goes by really fast. Now this is the parking lot out back here during normal business hours, do not park back there. Um, it is already clustered up with shipping and receiving. But if you're coming in at night, say five to nine, you guys feel free to park back there. Just do not block a bay door because we do use the bay doors quite frequently. If you guys do park in front of a bay door, Mark Wink will put a gearbox right behind your car and you guys will leave when he leaves, which is usually nine or 10 o'clock at night. We have a whiteboard in the tool room now. Uh, we've had it for quite a while, but Rick and I get hit up from employers seeking employees. So Rick and I will post them either on our office doors or on that whiteboard. Feel free to reach out to them. It's just job opportunities for you guys, summer hires, internships, et cetera. We put on the lab front door. Take advantage of these opportunities. Now this is your guys' textbook. You guys all have your textbook, right? Write your name on the inside cover, hold on to it, because you guys are going to use it for the duration of this program. Okay, so for the very beginning of our courses, all up until we get to pipe, all of our tests are online. You guys go home, read your chapters, it's open book, take your test. We try to push you guys to do one test a week, is how best way to stay on par for course here. Um, take one test a week, it's open book, easy peasy. 
Now, say you guys don't get a score you necessarily like. We don't allow retakes. But if you guys get your ducks in a row, come make an argument and argue points back with me and Rick, better have your ducks in a row. Well, we've had students argue points back because of how the text reads and misinterpreted and we clear it up for you. But if you're gonna make an argument with us, remember you're arguing with two welding inspectors. If we smell BS, we don't get any credit back, okay? If you guys have accommodations, don't raise your hands, but come talk with me and Rick in private and one of us will make the necessary arrangements to get you guys set up where you need to be set up. Uh, one big thing is last day to take written exams, whether you're in block or full semester classes, is have your written test done one week prior to the end of that block or semester. That helps me filter out the grades because at the end of the semester, I usually have a day to calculate grades and get them entered in for the people upstairs, um, which doesn't leave me a whole lot of time. If you guys figured 188 students, I had a grade 188 test, that's just single. Most of the classes have four or five, eight, 10 tests. So that is my way of trying to get your guys' grades done on time. This isn't the, the textbook, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep, yep, that is it. yep, that is it. Different color. It's just a new edition, but the content and everything is still in the same position. Um, now, when you guys get on Canvas, this is how it's going to look, okay? Everywhere it says chapter, that will be one of your guys' written exams. You just click it and say take exam, and you'll be good. Um, everywhere on the next slide here is your welding assignments. So like in 1755, this is all of your welding assignments. You guys will literally go through each step with me, Rick, or Uncle Bud, giving you guys a demonstration, and then we turn you guys loose on practice. Once you practice that entire list, um, you guys will have two class periods to practice up on whatever you need to practice up on, but then you're gonna say, I am testing out. Once you test out, this whole list takes about an hour and a half to test out. So don't panic if you guys are like two weeks in and you feel like you know you're somewhere down here in this list and you're like oh I'm, I don't have any grades you're not going to you're gonna go through that whole list with practice and demonstration first and then you are come back through and do it again test it all out within an hour and a half okay um, we usually don't allow you guys to test out until we feel you guys are ready which is usually like a seven eight nine or ten out of ten points we usually don't let you test out we're pretty fair on grading um, my big bugaboo is arc strikes. Rick's is too. If you were a new student, how would you approach this? You just come in. So the best way to approach this. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking the book knowledge with the practical. One chapter at a time or, or uh, to read ahead or what? So me personally, it is my opinion, does not hurt to read a chapter ahead so you kind of have a little bit of understanding. If you have questions in the booth, Rick, or I, Rick myself, or Uncle Bud will do our best to address them as we get asked them. Um, but absolutely read it ahead of time. It helps us. It might eliminate some of the questions you guys have. But if you guys ask them while we're in the booth, we address them then too. Um, yeah. Incomplete policy. I gave more incompletes this last semester than I have given out in my total nine years being up here. Um, the way incompletes work, say you run out of time in the semester, and you're not gonna have enough time to finish up your coursework. You have to have half your coursework completed, whether that is the welding test or the welding assignments, the hands-on side. Okay, you have to have one or the other uh, completed. You have to attend on a regular basis, which now we will be tracking via your fingerprint. So if you don't check in, there's obviously gonna be the letter grade drop plus this. Um, you guys have to approach Rick or myself. Uncle Bud can't help you out on this, but approach Rick or myself say, hey, can I get an incomplete? I'm running out of time. Um, we'll look at the criteria, and if you meet it, we'll fill it out for you, submit it, and that basically holds your spot so you do not have to pay for that course again the following semester. You just pick up right where you left off. On the flip side, it puts you that much further behind the next semester. Um, with the fingerprint thing, um, this is also gonna get a little more crucial as far as attendance. Say you guys may have got the welding assignments completed and stuff like that but did not show up on a regular basis. Uh, mine and Rick's hands will be tied from registration up there. They go in there and they see that you haven't attended on what they feel is a regular basis. They will retract your guys' incomplete policy. 
So there's nothing Rick and I can do on that. Um, you guys just have to make sure you show up and get your stuff done. So essay, everybody is required to write an essay. At the end of each five-week block is when they are due. You guys can email them, turn them in by person to a Rick or myself. We used to make you guys stand up in front of a classroom and do a little public presentation. We don't do that anymore. But pick any topic welding-wise and write about it. 250 to 400 page essay, cite your sources. It is a college paper. Um, stay away from welding processes, okay? Rick and I get hammered on those. We pretty well know the welding processes. But we think outside, if you can tie, the, tie it into welding somehow, some way, shape or form, great. Think outside the box. We've had them on metallurgical as far as exotic dancing poles. Um, we've had them on the politics as far as the North Dakota Access Pipeline. Um, We've had some great essays thinking outside how pinup girls got started back in World War II. If you can tie it into welding some way, shape, or form, think outside the box, get creative on this paper. Rick and I do read them and turn them in at, you only have to turn in one at one of those three dates. So before you guys start in the lab, read chapter 32 in your textbook. That safety test comes online at midnight tonight. Um, it is not your average run of the mill safety test. Uh, read your text take it you guys will find out just how our tests are structured rick has ran through all the tests that are online now and you guys will notice that there's more than one correct answer you have to pick the most correct answer it's in the book don't guess um, if you guys have any questions get on your canvas look up you and use the test online yes okay. yep and it'll tell us yep in here where yep the chapters are corresponding with the chapter tests that you'll find on your canvas. Um, sit down at home, open book, take your time, read it, then take your test is the best way to do it. Rick and I both highlight our text. Uh, we've taken a number of tests. We highlight as we read if we think it's important. Um, take a little notes and then you should be able to take that test and whiz right through it. Um, if at any point you guys have any questions, get on your canvas and click simple syllabus. It outlines everything you guys need to be doing within our course. Here's a sample of what your syllabus will look like. Has all of our contact information, whether it's me or Rick or both of us. Um, it'll have all of our information right there. Usually these are highlighted blue like our emails. That way it takes, click the link and it takes you right to our email. Um, email is kind of the best way to get a hold of us. Otherwise, find us in the office or in the lab. Um, we're usually not far. How many of you guys are interested or heard of Skills USA? Okay, so a couple of these gentlemen and gals that are in here are familiar. We have a state fabrication winner from Big Piney. Um, a couple of them, Daniel won state last year, placed top 10 in nationals. Um, we have multiple disciplines. We have auto, diesel, we have electrical instrumentation, welding, and early childhood development. Um, that is kind of my baby is this student run club. It's kind of like student council. We hold fundraisers, we volunteer in the community, but better yet, we wax all the other colleges in the state as far as competition. So I cater to the welding side. I have a fab team, I have a sculptor, um, I have individuals, and I do have a full roster now, but it's not to say if we get more on this roster, we welcome it. We can have a miniature competition within our program. We want to take the best representation of our school to these competitions. And this is our fourth year. We've been to nationals two of the three years that we've competed so far. Um, and I think this year we're going to be going back to nationals. So if you guys are interested in it, it is a student-run club. It is quite a bit of extra time, not a, too crazy. Um, but there are some other perks within that. We do some oddball projects like Aiden and Hunter. Uh, built a welding truck the last year and a half. Daniel has done a lot of sculpting. Um, this semester we will be starting on a slide for the athletic department, um, which will be something kind of different and out of the box, but we've kind of agreed to it. Um, <laughs> we've already been paid for it. So yeah, we've already been paid for <laughs> it. So we will be building an adult slide for the athletic department. Um, so we get to take on some extra projects like that that are outside of the curriculum to where Rick and I can show you guys how to fabricate and kind of get a little more knowledge of what 
our welding field is like. Now, I say this at the end of every orientation, are there any questions? Because as soon as we get out of here, you guys always come and corner us in our office and ask questions. Chances are, if you are thinking it, someone else is thinking it. So let's get these questions out on the table now. All right. Okay. Uh, first question. So with the essay, is there any specific format you want? No. Uh, actually, I've got a format kind of on, on uh, your Canvas shells. Look up there under essay or writing assignment. And it'll take you to a form where you put your name on it. Very important. I get a lot of them with no names. Uh, it'll have a spot for your content and a spot at the end to cite your sources. Okay. okay. It, it might be a little difficult to, to navigate, but you'll figure it out. Yeah, I'm sure I'll probably figure it out. Okay. Those five are the only blocks left in class? Yep. So make sure when you're looking on your schedule, Pay attention to whether it says A1, B1, or C1. If it's A1, it's this first five-week block. If it's B1, it's the second five-week block. If it's C1, it's the third five-week block. I also have another question. So, you, so with the S, it's also kind of with the essay. So there's like three dates. So that means you have to do three essays? No. One essay turns into one of those three dates. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. You don't have to do that this block if you don't get it done. You can. You got 15 weeks to basically get one essay done. Yeah. And just email it to us or bring it into my office or whatever, we'll, we'll get it. If you guys do it, it's an easy grade. If you don't do it, we drop you a letter grade. How do you like that? <laughs> nope. this, this is college. We have to learn to read and write. <laughs> yeah. Well, a little, little bit. The, just a short word. You'd be surprised. Some people don't know how to spell their own name. Okay. So, what else so first things first, you need to get a textbook, yep. read chapter 32, and at midnight tonight, you need to take that test, whether it's tonight or in the morning. Right. Take chapter 32, you got to pass out with a 90% or better, and which is like a 31 or a 32 out of 35. 32 out of 33, it's fine, yeah. Um, 32 out of 35, you guys come in the lab. And please help me and Rick out by having your class schedule printed out or on your phone so that you can say, hey, I'm starting today, I passed my safety test. Give me and Rick a quick reference to look at your phone and be like, okay, you have three welding classes, we're gonna start seeing this one because our class is working a progression. So it just gives us a quick reference because these first couple weeks are gonna be hell on wheels. Um, it's mad in the house until we get everybody started then it smooths out and then we have a lot of time to mess around. <laughs> so that same, that same safety test you have to take before each welding class. So it's the same test. So if an instructor has to tell you how to cheat, like write down your numbers and then just copy them again. It's the same exact test. We can't, uh, we can't unlock the next class without having a safety test in there. So as long as you passed it once, you can do it the rest of the time. So I walked in right when you were talking about it. But what about the fingerprints? Do I need to do that? We're going to do that right now as soon as we get done with this meeting. All right. <laughs> Another quick question. So with the time frame, I assume it's from the I know it ends like the last hour is like 9 p.m. Is the first hour 9 a.m. or is it a different hour? 7 a.m. 7 a.m. Gotcha. Yeah, I open the lab at 7 every morning. Gotcha. Yep. And I get three or four that are waiting on me to come in. So they're, we've got some early birds. Where is the lab exactly? Straight down the hall. Follow the smoke. Okay. Smoke <laughs> and the noise. <laughs> That is up to you. That's that's on your schedule. That and that's why we're doing these block and classes. If something takes longer, can I stay an extra session? Oh, there's there's, uh, there's no session. You, you've got you've got 14 hours a day. you have time available. you leave, I'm just hearing times now. I've been begging for times and no one. Yep, this is flex entries. This is uh, this is on your schedule. That we we have to work this around our industry. Uh, classes because they're set uh, classes and so in between their classes come in if you've got two hours on a Tuesday and five hours on a Wednesday make sure you're in there those days that that's the hard thing about our program is you got to be disciplined enough to get in when you have time not when you necessarily want to um, you just got to be disciplined enough to get in when you have time available um, I guess this, okay, this is kind of like an 
So, so we're oddball teachers, so go ahead. All right. Okay, so when it comes to cleanup, how long does it usually take for like cleanups? Like do you how messy are you going to get? So if it's really, really, really dirty, how long does it take to clean that? Uh, 10 minutes. Yeah, 10, 10, 10 minutes. Oh, okay. Yeah, but uh, all, then you got to put your stuff away. You don't have to have to mop and wash the walls and stuff. Yeah. No, you, um, you get a hand But you could. Yeah. It's going pretty easy to tell. Which Just like mom does. Just at LCCC, they make their guys mop the floor every day. Every day. Right. And it works. Their shop is impeccable. Ours is run down and old. A wreck. But a lot of that's me and Jake. So clean up after us too if you don't mind. Yeah. <laughs> We're probably the worst. <laughs> is it true that you're supposed to leave someone alone if they're on fire and try and finish their welding? Wait till yeah. they're done welding and then put them out. Mm -hmm. Don't don't disturb them while they've got that last inch of weld mm -hmm. to put down. That'll make me mad if you put me out when I'm still welding. <laughs> so if, that, if you come in, you tap yeah, yeah, and I'm on fire. you tap again? Yep. yep. Hopefully that's the way we've got it planned. We're going to see at the end of today if it works. <laughs> Any, Any other questions? Other questions? This, this bunch actually asks questions. I know. That's the first time in nine years. So I'll stop by my office tomorrow morning. Yeah, it, it'll depend on what class, but I'll have a generic uh, welding tool list. And you can show me your class schedule, and I'll be like, okay, you need these ones right here. And I'll put a check mark by the ones that you need. That's another thing. I, uh, I need nothing, but I love the, 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 what welding means and does. It's so perfect. All I knew is my, my uh, enamoration with, with welding. It's, just, it's, it's so much stronger than any other uh, I like structural, you. <laughs> mechanical uh, building material. So, um, but I, I, I didn't know anything uh, what I need, what, what, all, the, all the basics. So I'm thinking, how do I? Uh, it's overwhelming at first. That's why we're here. To me, like I, I know that some some welding you need to have a, a breathing mask. Uh, we we don't have that in our lab unless you want one. Uh, we have five different ventilation systems to pull that smoke out, and they are all working right now, which is awesome. And each booth probably has a each drop one has its own. Oh, it has a, our no, lab no. is. I just want to make sure I, I get all this stuff. Well, that's why we're here. If you have other questions or concerns, come see us. Thanks, and don't worry. I'm I'm also just kind of like getting into it, so I'm also a little bit overwhelmed. Yeah, cool. What's your name? Uh, Kaden. Kaden Sanchez. Kaden? Yes. Hey, Kaden. I'm Bart. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> You'll find this kind of camaraderie through our whole program. We have the best students. Uh, if Jake and I are busy, you can find any one of our students, Daniel, Aiden, uh, even Israel's fitting in pretty good now. So <laughs> He's our night guy, though. But you like any of these kids will take care of you. If you have a question, they'll tell you. If you don't learn stick welding before you learn, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, TIG. TIG and Nick, that you'll be spoiled forever. No, not no. necessarily. I, I still prefer stick welding. See, and I prefer TIG welding. Yeah. It's just our backgrounds. I've been looking at YouTube for a long time, and uh, so I've got some terms, but I, um, it just, I, I've seen that a lot of people that go out and they don't take any lessons, they buy a really nice welder, and then they, but they never, the commentary is that you don't learn stick welding you're never going to learn it if you don't start there. I'm rebuilding a 1966 SA200 right now in the diesel lab. It ran right before we tore it apart. We shot some carb cleaner and it hasn't ran in 30 years and it fired right up and welded. And so we're just kind of running through it. But no, it just depends on our backgrounds. That's Rick and I kind of come, I'm a fabricator. Rick's kind of a jack of all trades, a master pipe fitter. Um, got a lot more experience where I got maybe a little bit more technical background knowledge as far as schooling goes. Um, we complement each other, Uncle Bud, we all complement each other very well. I do a lot of MIG and TIG, these guys do a lot of pipe fitting stick and everything like that, but we kind of all do a little bit of everything. And we all do different things. So if you ask one of us for a demonstration and you try and it doesn't work, 
it's not going to hurt my feelings if you go ask Jake to try his method because uh, one of those methods will, will be close and you'll develop your own. I, I am seeing that there's this technique of figure eights. And it's all technique. Walking the cup and all this stuff that I've been watching online and I'm going, okay, each one has its, depends on, depends on what kind of welding it is, what kind of gas, what kind of electrode. Uh, and what kind of manipulation you do. Uh, right, Jake right. and I have so completely I'm different. a lot of techniques. Right. And, and depending on. One. But as long as they work, they work. Yeah. Depending on the process, uh, Rick may run colder, I may run hotter, or vice versa, depending on the process. Okay. We, we all have our own styles and techniques that we've developed over the years. And um, at the end of the day, it's just to reach a common goal. And um, that's what we do. <laughs> yeah. So if one thing doesn't work, Try somebody else, and if none of our stuff works, there are some good YouTube channels. I push it. Weld.com, uh, WeldTube, Bob they're Moffitt. both good. I'm here to learn yours. <laughs> oh, what is it? It's not to say that just ours is the yeah. correct way. It's just what works for us. Well, that's what I want to learn. Well, if there's no other question, that kind of concludes this orientation.